Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. Tonight I'm answering another request. I've been taking some requests from people lately. Um, you know, because at the end of some of my videos, like if you have any recipe suggestions or any requests, please leave them. So lately I've been getting inundated with a lot of requests for doing more sharpening videos. So last week I was contacted by United States Marine and he asked me a very simple question. How do I sharpen one of these out in the field? And uh, he wanted okay. to know just how to get a workable edge on a knife like this K-Bar out in the field. Not a razor's edge, not like the kind of edge I used to shave or chisel my fingernail or anything like that because an edge like that is too thin for field work. He just wanted to know how I get a workable edge on a knife like this. Let me tell you a little field. something about... Okay guys, let me tell you a little something about this Marine that contacted me about this sharpening issue. The knife he most likely is using is a knife like this. This is a K-Bar. This knife has been this way since 1942. This is a new generation K-Bar. The steel is still the same. They just put on some heavier accoutrements and a rubberized grip, but the blade is still the same kind of steel. And he asked me how I sharpen a knife like this because he's using a small carbide sharpener like this little Benchmade tool, okay? These are all right. They work, but they don't work for forever. And the premise behind this is you set this down on a flat surface, you take your knife, and you make sure your knife remains perpendicular, and you draw, okay? You lay it down, and you draw, okay? And that's all fine and good. Um, they do work. These sharpeners do work, but they only work for a limited amount of time. And let me explain why. What happens is this is the carbide sharpener, okay? This is your knife, okay? When you insert your knife into the carbide sharpener, the only part that's getting a treatment is the primary cutting edge of your knife meeting at the bottom of the carbide sharpener, all right? Your secondary bevels, okay? Your back bevels or secondary grind here are not receiving any treatment from the sides of this carbide sharpener, okay? Only the primary cutting edge, no secondary treatment, no secondary bevel, no secondary grind. This is usually set between 20 and 30 degrees depending on the manufacturer and only your primary grind, that being the very cutting edge of your knife, is being treated in this carbide sharpening. The other way to sharpen a knife was with a file and many guys carried around a half cut file or a box cut file because they were about the size of this knife and fairly light to carry in your pack. And what they did with it is they would lap the knife. They would take the knife upside down like this, okay? Find the angle with the file and go up and out at the same time. Monitoring the pressure, okay? Monitoring the pressure. The box cut file is the file made famous back in the days of Jim Bowie because the box cut file cuts micro serrations into the bottom of your blade. It's the original serrated blade. They come on the other side and the same thing. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Okay? That's how a blade was created with a file. Well, the premise is still good today and it still works. If you want an edge that really cuts, sharpen it up with a file out in the field. Okay? The modern way is with these diamond files. Okay, you've seen these, you've seen me use these before. The larger sizes for the home. This is how I sharpen my knives out in the field. This is a DMT diafold. Okay, it's a blue black, black being 220 grit, blue being 325. And when your edge is really rounded, this coarse grit allows you to take the edge down fairly quickly. You don't have to push, you just let the stone do the work. Then I'll treat the knife with a 600-1200 diafold, okay? This being the 1200 side, this being the 600 side, to help refine the edge, all right, if I want to take it down even that much further. Now, it's not necessary to polish an edge to a razor sharpness out in the field if you're a serviceman, but at one point DMT did make this green 1200 and white 7 micron, which they no longer make, so they replaced it with a 1200 micron, 1200 mesh, 8000 mesh 
for super polishing before so, we even need it. Let's just say we have a skinning knife like this one here, and it's dull, and it is a bit dull, so I'll move this aside. How do you take care of it? You put it in your hand, one finger or two, you just support the back, you feel for the angle. It, it, it's hard to show you here, but you feel for the angle, okay? You don't want to lay flat, you'll scratch it up. You don't want to go too high, you'll roll it. So you feel for the angle right about there, and you go up and out, up and out. Okay, now it might be hard to see, but that shiny spots that you're catching, that's metal being freshly exposed. Okay, count off your strokes. Okay, count off your strokes. You can even work the curvature because I can tell this is on slightly a different angle. And once you get the knack for it, all right. If the light will catch it, you'll see the, the exposed metal shining if the light gets it right. Then you turn it over in your hand and you take that same grit and you find that angle okay, where it starts to bite up and out. Use the same amount of pressure. Takes a little practice with the left hand, but you will get it. Okay. These diafolds are light. Oh, you know, there. These diafolds are light. They don't weigh your pack down. They last forever. They can be used wet or dry. Okay. And if the light will catch it, it's hard to tell, but I am exposing fresh metal. Now, in this case, this knife has to be worked for quite some time. It's fairly dull. So I'm going to continue working it with the 220 grit. Okay. And then I'm going to move to the three and a quarter grit. The reason I'm not using it on my K bar is my K bar is fairly sharp, mirror polish sharp, but I'll do a few strokes on it. But for right now, I'm going to work this knife on a 220 grit. And then I'm going to move to the 325. And we'll get this puppy nice and sharp. Okay, I've been working this knife for about 10 minutes on the 220. Okay, if you can see the shiny metal, okay, that's all new, that's all new blade. This thing will cut right now. There's another way to safely lap with this file. Besides going up and out, okay, like I showed you, okay, you can take this knife and you can take this file, okay, put it in your hand like so. Put two fingers in the back, one thumb on the front to press it into your hand and make a fist, okay? Then you can use this stone this way, okay? Especially if you can cover the amount of distance of the knife. You have to have enough real estate on the stone to cover the real estate of the knife blade, which this is doing quite nicely, okay? So you could do it this way as well. Okay. I'm going to work this for a few more minutes on the 220, and then we're going to move to 325. So I finished working the Skinner on the 220. I'm going to move to the 325, but I thought I would do a little bit on the K-Bar too. The K-Bar is a little bit of a thick edge, so it's hard to feel. But you, you try to find your angle where the stone bites, just like when sharpening at home. Okay. Forward and up forward and up. You'll feel some rough spots along the way. Forward and up. See, I'm not hitting any of the coating. Just the edge. Forward and up. Switch sides, okay? Find that angle. Forward and up. It's a little more difficult with the left, but you'll get it, okay? This is what it takes, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is turn this over, okay, 325 grit, and I'm going to lap this stone and lap this knife this way, okay, because I can cover the real estate. Now I'm going to do this for about 10 minutes and take it down, okay. 
I worked it on the first stone, the 220, for about 15 minutes. It was really dull. Okay. But I'm going to work it on this. I don't know, the 5 or 10. Now I'm going to go to the 600 grit. Usually in the field, the 600 is where I would stop on the medium grit 600 because it's all I really need. So let's continue on and I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, so I've been working this Skinner on the 325 and it's just about done. Okay, this thing is ready to cut now. Okay, it doesn't have a paper cutting edge, but if you needed to cut rope, if you needed to chop wood, baton wood, okay, cut materials. Let's say you were like back in the days of Jim Bowie and uh, you had to fight to save your life. This would cut right through buckskin right now. Okay, now I'm going to take the K-bar and I'm going to work it on the 325 for a while as well. Okay, you just got to find that angle. I know this might be difficult for you guys to see at this angle, but it's the only way I can get this done. Okay? There's a rough spot on the end of that K-bar. But I'm going to work the K-bar at 325 for a few minutes. And then we're going to move on to 600. Okay, so I'm still working the K-bar on a 325 grit stone, but I've decided to go to the hand lapping style, okay? Okay, like I said, two fingers back here, a thumb, and press it into your hand, okay? Support the stone, support the stone in the back, okay? Lay the knife, find your angle when it bites, and follow the stone. Some people are more comfortable with this than doing the file style. So I'm switching to this for the demonstration, okay? 325 grit, five minutes more, and then I'm going to move on to 600. Okay guys, I finished with the 600 grit red. I'm going to tune it up a little bit on the 1200 grit green, okay? Just four or five minutes, you know, nothing spectacular. Okay, like I said, this kind of blade, not necessary out in the field. I'm just doing it for the sake of demonstration. Okay, this is 1200 grit. What I'm doing here is taking basically a brand new K-bar that comes out of the factory with some imperfections in the grind because they produce them so quickly. The blade actually comes out a little bit uh, wavy uh, in certain spots. So what I'm doing with these tiny stones okay is I am reprofiling the edge of this knife what will you be doing in the field as a marine when you're not making perfect edges but you want to make an edge that works oh I hear my cell phone okay is you're gonna be reprofiling this edge so technically that is what I'm doing here I am reprofiling this k-bar to make it a more efficient cutter than when it came out of the box Okay. Okay. This is stud grade 2x4. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. Is that a workable enough blade for you there, Marine? Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for watching my video tonight. I hope you liked my example of how to sharpen a knife out in the field. Okay, like I said, it doesn't have to be razor sharp, but it has to be functional enough to cut and to chop and to do other in sundry chores. If my marine buddy is watching out there, I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, I hope you get some use for it. Semper Fi. I'll see you guys next week when I'm going to be doing a serrated knife video. How to sharpen serrated knives at home my way. You take care and I'll see you on the next video.